Okay. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first, at the first, I need to apologize that uh, my co-speaker co Jun Huang uh, is busy in something, so he cannot attend this conference. How? Okay. Uh, this is uh, today's topic. We will uh, talk about our uh, dining space uh, <coughs> rocket flight control system. Uh, my name is George Kam. I'm the Avionics Software Manager in ARC, ARC. <clears throat> ARC is, the, uh, is a research organization uh, in Taiwan, uh, in National Jiaotong University in Taiwan. Uh, our mission is to build the rocket from scratch. Uh, this is... Uh, the fly mission about our uh, HTTP3A rocket. Uh, this rocket is a two-stage hybrid rocket. Uh, that means its, it's oxygen is liquid and uh, its fuel is solid. And uh, our mission is to need to build, uh, bring this rocket to 100 kilometers high. Uh, in this slide, it shows why the rockets need the real-time <coughs> control during the flight. Uh, during the flight, uh, the rocket is under the high dynamics. Uh, that means uh, uh, its attitude or its attitude will be changed uh, rapidly. Uh, in order to uh, stabilize the rockets, uh, we need a control system to respond to the, these changes uh, in real time. Uh, besides, the system should be able to steer the rocket to our mission. Uh, the flight control model can be divided into three stages, uh, sensing, computing, and actuation. <clears throat> in the sensing stage, uh, there were several uh, sensors like GPSR and IMU, uh, which is used to gather the rocket status. And, uh, and uh, this uh, sensor data were delivered to the computing, computing model, which consists of three uh, submodels, uh, navigation, guidance, and uh, control. The purpose of the computing model is to use these uh, sensor data to generate a control command. And uh, this control command will deliver to the next stage, actuation. In actuation stage, we will have uh, different kinds of actuators, like TVC or BUB. And uh, this BUB will uh, adjust rocket status by executing the control command for the computing. And uh, these uh, changes will be <coughs> detected, will be de detected by sensor. And so the flight control will be, uh, will <coughs> will be loop uh, operation. And uh, what we need to do is to make sure uh, this uh, flight control operation is real time. Oh. Uh, this is an overview of, of our uh, avionic system. <clears throat> our uh, avionic system uh, consists of uh, two uh, subsystems, uh, the communication systems and uh, the flight control system. To, today, we will focus on the flight control system. <clears throat> First, uh, we talk about the sensing. Uh, the sensing is uh, the most important because it's need to, it, it is the source of the flight control. Uh, in order to make sure it's real-time performance, we put this operation in uh, the PRU microcontroller in CPU. 
uh, the PRU is designed for real-time application, and uh, <coughs> it it has uh, has low latency I/O and uh, isolated uh, runtime environment. So uh, each PRU can query the sensor indiv individually with <coughs> with without a disturbance. For example, we can uh, put the GPS query in one PRU and the uh, IMU query in another uh, PRU. Uh, however, most of our flight control application <coughs> run on the Linux user space. So we need the so we need the communication interface between the PRU and the, the user space application. <coughs> Currently, we, uh, in order to reduce the latency uh, between uh, the communication latency between the uh, user user space app and the PRU, we use the memory map mechanism to map the PRU resource to user space. Uh, to to the address space of the user's application, and then the user space application can access the resource directly. Currently, we have we map two types of PRU resource. Uh, one is the data memory; it stores the query result and the uh, <coughs> INTC which is the uh, PRU's uh, interrupt controller. And, can, and the, we can use INTC to for synchronizations between the user's app and the PRU. Then <coughs> we talk about the computing models. The computing model, model as I mentioned before, consists of three sub-models, uh, navigation, guidance, and control. Uh, navigations, uh, uh, navigation will receive the uh, sensor data and it will do some operation. Uh, it will do some uh, process like calibration to uh, reduce the sensor's flaws and uh, <coughs> coordinate transmission to transform the coordinator between sensors and the rocket body. And uh, it also consists of the sensor fusion mechanism to combine uh, different kinds of sensor to, pr to provide the uh, occurrence uh, rocket status. And uh, this ro <coughs> rocket status will give to the uh, guidance model the purpose of a guidance model is to uh, produce the optimized steering command <clears throat> by the predefined uh, predefined mission arguments and uh, the uh, current navigation data. <clears throat> so this is the, the optimized steering command will give to the control model. And control model will reference the navigation data and uh, the guidance data to, <coughs> to produce the actuator command. And so the computing will put on the uh, pre-NRT Linux systems. In pre-NRT pre Linux, High priority tests like our GNC or flight model can preempt the system almost any time if it is when it is triggered. Uh, so uh, this could reduce the latencies of the high priority test. Besides, uh, high resolution timer uh, can produce uh, can provide the pre precise time for the rocket control. And our, com our flight control is built, on, uh, built as the application on NASA's core flight software. NASA CFS is an open source project. It contains the OS 
AL uh, for uh, different kinds of platform pro protein. Now it's uh, supposed uh, Linux breaks or VX works and RS platform. And uh, you also provide the CFV core flight executed, which consists of uh, uh, <coughs> reliable, uh, reusable, and uh, uh, re re reusable uh, service for development. <coughs> okay, now we will uh, discuss the real time issue. Uh, on CFS. CFS. First, the application, uh, the, the CFS application is the POS6 thread, and uh, it is managed by the CF, CFS security service. Uh, so we can, uh, we can manage the, <coughs> the priority of the CFS application through this ES service. And uh, the memory <coughs> model is also impact the real-time performance. CFE provides the memory pool mechanism for each user to manage its own uh, memory. The advantage of the memory uh, pool is that the allocation is deterministic, <coughs> but it's also restricted because User should uh, predefined its memory uh, memory memory size. Besides, uh, the execution time will not be constant in the multi-threading environment uh, because of the lock issue. <coughs> the inter-process uh, communication uh, provide mechanism provide the CFE, it's called the software bus, which is implemented by the uh, Linux message queue. On software bus, application can publish and subscribe messages uh, through this standard interface. So the applications can, lose, can be loosely coupled and the de development in individually. <coughs> All of our uh, uh, rocket flight control applications are mounted on the software bus. And the time service is, uh, is, an, is another important component. The time service uh, in CFS has, has two important functions. First, it should, it should provide the precise time for the systems. Second, it need to distribute the uh, wake up command. The time service provide the, uh, the time service uh, had a, a one hertz local timer, it, but it also uh, used the external uh, signal with high time accuracy. Like a GPS, the, like the PPS of GPSR uh, to calibrate the, the timer. <clears throat> Our flight control is also triggered by the uh, time service, but the time service, the default frequency of time service is one hertz. It is too slow for our application, so we increase the time <coughs> increase the frequency for our rocket. For the actuations, <clears throat> we build, uh, we use the EtherCAT as the real-time actuation network. Uh, it is a master and step architecture with cyclic operation. Uh, in this network, it could guarantee the, lat the latency and the uh, cycle time will be low in transmission. Besides, it also provide the distribu distributed clock to synchronize all the <coughs> devices on this network. So, 
uh, we we will integrate the Easter Lab. Uh, we will integrate the Easter Lab address masters uh, as our uh, education application on CFS. Our uh, Easter Cat provides two kinds, two types of communication: uh, service data objects and the process data objects. Uh, service data object S or called S SDO uh, is one-to-one uh, -one communication, but it is not real time. So <coughs> the master will use this will use SDO to initialize and uh, configure the actuator driver. For the PDOs, uh, PDO it is a side click. Uh, operation so and and uh, and cyclic communication and uh, it can uh, which can uh, exchange the control command and the f feedback for each uh, slave node so it is the real time uh, communication and uh, is uh, uh, one to many communication. Uh, here is an example uh, show about the uh, control result. Uh, the x, x axis is the time and the y axis is the uh, control and the feedback value. Uh, uh, because of the uh, confidential issue, uh, the, uh, the 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 value of the uh, coordinator is heightened. Okay. Uh, so we can see uh, the control. At, there's a delay between the control and uh, the feedback, <clears throat> but it's not. It's not uh, only. Due to the uh, transmission uh, transmission delay, uh, but also the mechanic mechanical operation uh, mechanical response should be considered, and uh, we can see uh, the feedback. There is difference. There is a little difference between the feedback one and feedback two. <coughs> That means uh, these two devices, is, this two actuator device is not uh, synchronized. So uh, finally, we can put all the components all together, <coughs> and and uh, we can summarize the real time issues. Uh, first, uh, we need to make sure the time service should be occurrence. Uh, occurrence and the precise because it need to trigger the file control <clears throat> and the second uh, the communications latency of the software bus should be low and the third uh, the the we we need to uh, make ensure the synchronization between PRU and the CPU so that we can uh, get the sensor data with the correct timing. And finally, uh, the, uh, we should consider the GNC uh, executing time and the, the EtherCAT transmission time. Uh, before the rocket launch, we need to uh, verify our uh, flight control model on the ground in, adv in advance. So we build out the simulation by ourselves. The simulation model uh, could be divided into two parts, uh, dynamic model and the flight model uh, is also a GNC. A dynamic dynam model will provide uh, the dynamic model uh, will simulate the flight environment and the rocket's property. And so the dynamic model will provide the rocket state 
to the GNC. And the GNC will output the control command as the feedback to the dynamics model. So the dynamics model will update the rocky status according to this uh, control command. So uh, the flight control, uh, so the simulation will be, uh, will also be a loop operation. The <coughs> flight control evaluation, evaluation process uh, includes three stages, uh, PI, uh, SILO, PILO, and the HILO. In the SILO, both Dynas, Dynas model and the GNC run in the same environment. In this stage, we could do the missions planning and the mod models development and the verification. And uh, in, in the next stage, PILOs, the GNC will be spit out and uh, implemented as the uh, flight software. So in this, uh, and, and this, in this stage, Dynamics model uh, will generate the sensor data, not the uh, rock state status. So in PILO, we will, uh, we will evaluate the, <coughs> the flight service performance. And the next stage in HILO, the, rock, the simulator should use some, use some instruments to simulate the rocket's physical uh, dynamics. And this, the goal of the HILO is to uh, verify the total flight control system, including hardware and software. And so the simulator, simulators will use, uh, will use some instruments to uh, simulate the dynamics, uh, Rocket's dynamics. And uh, this dynamics, dynamics will be detected by the sensors. The, and uh, the flight control system will use these sensors data to generate the actuator command. And the, and the actuator will act, will act through this command. And uh, the, the actuator's feedback and the actuator feedback will send to will be sent to the simulator. So the simulator will, will uh, update its rocket status. And rocket, yeah, okay. <coughs> our, uh, our simulation, uh, module rocket simulation is current our uh, uh, simulation to verify the rocket's uh, flight control. Uh, it is it's now an open source project, and it can support different kinds of rocket uh, mission, like the KDEX++ rocket and our own ARC rocket. Uh, at, at present, only the KDEX++ rocket simulation is open. Uh, this is the result about the uh, the simulation is the simulation result about the KDEX++ three stage. We compare the uh, module's result and uh, the K original KDEX++ result. And uh, <coughs> finally. Uh, we will, uh, we will, uh, we, uh, currently, uh, Mazu's rocket simulation uh, is only supports SILO, SILO. And uh, we want to uh, uh, port the GN, the flight model to the uh, C CFS and uh, combine them as the uh, for PIL simulation. And uh, we, want, uh, we also want to uh, contribute uh, our uh, effort, efforts to the CFS project, like uh, the IO drivers and the performance, performance improvement. Okay. 
Okay. Now, th this is the progress of our arc rocket. Uh, uh, before uh, 19, uh, 2016, uh, we launched uh, several uh, Sunday rockets, but uh, it is not, it, it does not, uh, it, it, it does not have the uh, flight control. <clears throat> and uh, the current project is to build the HTTP 3.8 uh, rocket. So, so currently we, uh, we almost uh, integrate the hardware and the software and the verify that by the uh, core flow test. And, and we plan to launch the, the second stage uh, in March 2020. And uh, the four uh, flight tests will be arranged in August 2021. Uh, finally, I need to uh, thanks to our financial support <coughs> from the from the Ministry of Science and, Tech and the Technology of Taiwan and uh, the Advanced, Advanced Rocket Research Center of the National Jiaotong University. Oh, thank you.